Gribētu aicināt visus ieņemt sēdvietas. Mazliet paklausīsimies, ko Bjorns mums šodien pastāstīs par P3 programmatūru. Andrejs teica, ka ir svarīgi ieslēgt spuldzīt laikā un vietā, tad šis būs priekš pikseļu mīlētājiem, kā ātri un forši visu to saslēgt kopā un darbināt. Tā kā es došu vārdu Bjornam. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, sorry, I don't speak Latvian. So, yeah, I hope it was a nice introduction. But, yeah, anyways, I'm <laughs> Björn Stolt uh, from Martin Professional. I'm from Sweden, so not Danish like my colleague Emil over there. But, yeah, he will come in later to talk the Danish talk. But Scandinavian is Scandinavian in a way. Uh, I'm here to talk uh, first about P3 now and then a bit about the products and about the exterior things. So I get the really full, full shebang of our product portfolio today. Uh, I'm working as an application engineer, so more product specialist, which is a quite broad term within our company because we have so many different products. But I tend to specialize on getting stuff to work and get boxes to speak to boxes and uh, make as good of a product as possible in the end. So P3 is one of our backbone things. It's uh, our LED processing unit, basically. But first, a little bit about what we're talking about today. This is a part of our Learn from Martin program, which is a program of courses that we can do together with our local distributors or on our own or customized for anyone who wants to do a training on Martin equipment. So it's a platform with a lot of different courses with, of course, focus on our products, but we also do some broader things as well. So this is the P3 introduction, uh, which is basically just showing you what P3 is, what it does, and why it's a great thing. Uh, then you can move on to a P3 basic training where you learn more about mapping, and then onwards to an advanced course where you do a lot more with consoles and media servers. So this is like the one hour version of 10 hour training in a way. So yeah, hopefully you'll understand something of it. And yeah, if I'm speaking too quick, then please tell me to slow down and I'm open for questions the whole time as well. So first part here is basically a high level introduction of P3 and then demonstration of basic workflows. So P3 was developed already in 2008. So it is a quite old We did it first because the products we used to have on the video side at Martin in 2000, I think it was 2007, we launched the LC panels, which was a two by one meter, 40 millimeter LED screen with like see-through uh, fins, uh, fins uh, which worked really well and it had DVI distributions. You had DVI splitters for the signal, which wasn't great, but that was basically what you had at the point of time in 2007. So then we thought, okay, can we make this better? What can we do? Which, uh, what is a standard connector that will work over time? Okay, network connectors. Yes, that will work. So we put our brightest heads together uh, and then developed something called P3. And the P3 stands for Pixel Push Protocol. So it's three Ps. So easy with the naming in that sense. So it builds on doing uncompressed pixels over network, which means we have some limitations in terms of bandwidth for video screens, but it's no issue in that sense for smaller products or creative video products. And we're trying to use it for all products that speak pixelated things, like the RAPXL, like the Atomic Bowl, like the Atomic Dot that you see on the table over there, uh, but also for the Mac Ultra, which, as you see, it flickers a little bit in the light engine. The light engine is divided in 10 parts, so you can actually, via P3, control all the 10 strings of LEDs individually, which means you can make unique effects using video to send to it. But it, of course, also works on our more standard VC grids, VC strips, which is small panels. We used to do square panels, like normal video panels, but got to the point where we understood that 
okay, people are not really buying our product because the premium we have to put on the price, meaning more expensive than the Chinese panels, and all the cross-rentable flexibility with having everything uh, so calibrated that we are doing didn't make sense for panels because it made them too expensive and people didn't want to pay for it. So then we went on to do what we are best at, which is creative products in that sense. So we don't want to force anyone to use P3, but yeah, you will see, hopefully, during this demonstration that it kind of makes sense to use it in combination with DMX, Artnet and Streaming ACM for the control parts, but to keep on with the P3 bandwagon for sync and everything in between because we do really want to make life simple for the guys working with systems on shows. So you don't have to do all the pixel mapping things in multiple steps. You have to do it once, and then it's a simple step with predefined things. And we want to make it cheaper to run products with pixelated control instead of renting 100 MPUs to make your MA system really big and expensive. So a basic P3 system would look something like this. So you see a lighting console that feeds DMX, Artnet, or Streaming ACN into the P3, a media server that sends video into the P3 controller. So very valid point, P3 is not a media server. It does not play video. It takes video input and translates it into the pixels. So no, it does not play video, which is one of the most common questions. And then out from the P3, you have another network port that feeds gigabit ethernet to a switch and then splits out to a myriad of fixtures. And as we are working on level two networking, we don't need to care about IP addresses because we only work on MAC addresses. It only works on Martin products, which means it's simple for us to have it auto detectable. So you will see when we go through the basic workflow uh, of what we're doing, how it actually works. So P3 does all mapping, addressing, mode selection, and monitoring. And then you run the show from the console or media server. Which means using P3, you don't have to physically touch the fixture to readdress them. You can do that from here. Kind of in the way that RDM was meant to work. But yeah, I've still yet to see an implementation where it works perfectly in the way you want it for a show. So what you're seeing here is a bunch of different products. So in this one, you have video Fatrons, which is the Vs. On the screen here, you have Macora PXLs and Mac Allures in between, which is the round pixelated fixtures, and then atomic bolts underneath. So the white square, which is the background, is your HD canvas, so basically your video screen. So the thing with P3 is you can match, mix and match fixtures in any resolutions together on the same canvas. You can angle them, group them, scale them, split them, do whatever you want in, in free form. So basically, you can take an image of your video installation and then place the fixtures where they are and the correct video will be played on them. So playing video would look something like this. Basically, the video comes in and then all the products get the correct pixels in the correct place and uncompressed, meaning you get perfect video result. Which is a big thing. Of course, you can use it to patch as well. And address fixtures. And once it's addressed in P3, in P3 and matched to a real product, the product gets the information in real time. So if I'm doing two presets, one for basic mode and one for extended mode for a festival, the main act wants basic mode because they're cloning, but then some opening acts want to use more creativity and have more time so they can use the extended mode. Then instead of re-addressing all the fixtures by bringing down all the trusses and changing modes and addresses, I can just push a button in P3 and then all the fixtures are re-addressed. Which kind of makes life easier for a system tech. Yep. Okay. Uh, I got a note here that the exteriors are blinding people a little bit, so I need to exit the presentation and then jump back in. Uh, 
and then we'll take down those ones. As you see, everything is live, so yeah, we do it this way because it's more fun. And the P3 enabled Martin fixtures is of course the whole creative video family with video Skeptron, Fatron, Dotron, and video atomic dots and bolts. Dots and bolts you see on the table over there. Then you have the Mac family with the Mac Allure, Mac Aura PXL, Aura XIP, the Mac Ultra family, and all the upcoming Mac fixtures. And of course, a lot of the architectural video products like the video or exterior Pixline family and VC dot and grid family. You have four different options for P3 processors, as in the hardware to run P3. One version is the PC version, which I'm running here, which gives you up to 20,736 pixels for free. Of course, you can only use it on Martin products because that's the only products that speak P3, so free is kind of yeah, <laughs> a way of defining it because, of course, you need to buy our products in order to make it work. Uh, but you can do screen capture input, NDI input, or have it running inside a Hypnotizer media server. With them, we have an integration, so it's just a toggle switch to run the software. And you can still do 128 universes of ArtNet and streaming ACN input in case you want to do pixel mapping and those kind of things in your console instead of doing it in here. And it needs to run on Windows. Then you've got the P350, which is the smallest or step in stone of processors that gives you up to 100,000 pixels. And I mean 100,000 pixels, talking about a Mac Ultra, 10 pixels. So that's still quite a few, so 10,000 of the Mac Ultras on that one. And even a video Fatron, which is 200 pixels, you still get quite a few on the 100,000. Of course, it's not that much in terms of video screens, where the P3 150 is 520,000 pixels, which is one quarter HD, which is not a lot if you count in terms of normal video, but in creative pixels, it's a lot. And what we're doing with the bandwidth limitation is basically the 520,000 pixels or quarter HD in network terms goes up to around 800 megabits. So it's almost filling a gigabit stream of data. And we want to keep it on a cheap level of hardware, so we don't do 10 gigabit where we could do full HD over a single cable. So we're keeping it simple with the gigabit. So if you need to use full HD and have that many video panels to use for it, for the output to the screen, then you need to do four network runs and use a P3 300 or four pieces of the 150. So it's a little bit complicated until you get into understanding what I'm really saying, but the thing is the workspace is still HD. So you can place your pixels wherever you want. It's the output to the fixtures that's limited to save on bandwidth. So I'm hoping that kind of explains things. So the 300 has four P3 outputs, so it can do four times 520,000 pixels. Examples of P3 being used. So here comes the nice images of big rigs with P3. This one was a couple of Norwegian wrappers, which sounds a little bit interesting, but yeah, they still employed 600 Skeptrons in this rig, where every square is two by two meters. And then lighting fixtures and video screens in between everywhere. And also Skeptrons in the floor. There's a lot of videos and case stories on our web, web page in case you want to see some fun stuff around there. Danish Industry, which is a big building in the middle of Copenhagen, which has a version of the exterior pix line on the whole facade or on three sides of the facade. So the side towards Tivoli was not allowed to use because they didn't want to be blinded by it. But the rest of it is basically playing content across the whole facade with a lot of nice integration from the visual supplier. Grammy Awards used a lot of video fatrons in the lines kind of on the screens coming in. So the fly rig that's coming in where it says Grammy down there. And then of course the Auckland Bridge, which is 
our longest P3 bridge, which is, I think, three kilometers long. So it's filled with P3 fixtures all along. So everything that's colored is a P3 fixture. So they're running content across the whole bridge at festive times and nice times in there. And then, of course, the glorious Omnia chandelier in uh, Las Vegas, where all the little lines and dots on the inside and outside of the chandelier is VC strips and VC dots from our VC product line that then is used together with the automation to be remapped in real time. Or just simple installs like this one, which is PIX lines inside a concrete wall on a walkway on a hotel. Could be an interesting way of doing it. So you've got key features in here, which is doing nice and easy uh, layouts of fixtures. Map video onto fixtures from any source. So basically any video coming in will be mapped out to your fixtures. All the scaling and mapping is taken care of by P3. So you don't need one processor per screen resolution, which is the case for most LED screens. And you can patch all your fixtures to DMX and Artnet, uh, DMX and Artnet set modes, start addresses without walking around and touching the fixtures. And it's fully synchronized, which means all the uh, fixtures get the same change frame at the same time. So it's not like a bunch of divided Artnet universes that end up being out of sync when you're doing quick color bumps, because everything runs in sync as well. So we've got align tools, spread tools, paste at mouse locations, just to help with your mappings. And then of course you can import stages, sets, building drawings with opacity and map directly onto it. And you can show video input on the canvas. So now we'll just pop into the program and see how it works. So the program looks like this, we get into it. Yes, it looks quite old, we are uh, hopefully at Frankfurt or a month after or something like that, launching a new GUI and a new version of the software where it's going to be a bit more modern. But as it is now, we're still stuck in the old way. So basically the white square here is an HD canvas. So that's 1920 by 1080 pixels. So this is where you place your fixtures and your video gets played on it. So if I use my view modes and go to video input, this is what it looks like with video onto the fixtures. So this means if I take the Fatrons that I've got here, I right click over them and choose the spread function. I can spread them horizontally so I can move these 10 fixtures out. I can easily do my classic control C, control V to copy and paste the fixtures. I can place them underneath here. And you see these ones are playing video straight away. The other ones are white. That's because the other ones, the white ones here, they are patched in the DMX Emotion tab. So they've got an address coming from the lighting controller here, which means they're in hybrid mode right now, which means I can do either DMX or video to the products. So that means these ones, if I get my buttons correct, are now blue, because I programmed the queue with all of them in blue from the lighting console. I can then do my normal lighting effects on them, or just do pixelated stuff. So this is playing regardless of the video. So I'm triggering basically a white test pattern in every fixture and then forcing the fixture to go red to white with color. I can then just flip the P3 switch over to video, and then video keeps on running on the fixtures. So I'm easily doing things in a hybrid way, where I'm mixing between DMX and video. Because not all shows have video coming in all the time, or sometimes it makes more sense to do stuff like lighting things normally is. Or if you have a long truss of Aura PXLs, or Aura XIPs, and then on the video screen, there's a bunch of swooshing movements or lines coming in and out. Then you just open up the P3 channel for those 
fixtures in those queues where you want them to follow the video. Or if you've ever done a launch video programming of something and the only real lighting work you're doing is following the colors of the video, why not just open up the P3 channel and then let the video run and then the color will be followed in perfect sync and you don't have to worry about that and can spend more time doing other things. For the fixtures I've got on the table here. So this is basically my Atomic Bold, or XIP, Ultra Performance, Atomic Dot, Cold and Warm. You see these ones are green, which means they are connected, which means everything is working as it should. They are placed roughly where they are placed on the table. If I move this one around, it also moves in real time, of course, and then gets the new pixel data. If I change content coming in, maybe not do this one, but do the white lines. You see on the fixtures, they're now getting the white lines instead. I can rotate the fixture if it's not going the right way. As it is now, it's going the wrong way. So yeah, of course, that is what it is, but it's a nice way of doing easy mapping things. And then if you click on the fixture, you see here I can do color correction straight from P3. So I can remove red, I can remove green. This is a way of overriding the lighting console. I can also do it from the lighting console. Uh, but the main thing here is if I click down, click on the serial number, I have direct access to the fixture. So I can see the temperature at the fixture. I can see his firmware version. I can see color modes, DMX modes, DMX addresses, universes, DMX overrides, see all the settings in real time that you would see, you would be able to set from the control channel of the lighting console. But here I can set it straight away and get response that everything is okay. As I said, in the way that RDM was meant to work, but yeah, I still haven't seen an implementation of it. I will also have status LEDs in here for external DMX being received from the console and have all my fixtures online or offline. So here, of course, the Fatrons are offline. So it does bring a lot of possibilities for systems management and also, of course, for simplicity of systems. So of course you don't have to use video. We don't force you to use video input, but even as a systems tool, it's quite easy to just set up the system, patch them in here, click through the fixtures, and then go, for, go from there. So we'll get back to this presentation again. And as always, I always go a little bit too long when doing the demo thing, so I'm talking about double things again now. But it, it, the main focus is system tech can do a lot of systems things with fixtures without bothering the LD. So the LD can focus on actually getting the best looks out of it. And then system guy can do all the other things, which is basically controlling the fixtures. Another way is looking at a use case of 100 Macora PXLs from a console running in ludicrous mode because you really want to map all the pixels on your console, so 512 channels per fixture. Of course, then you need a full console, three times uh, MPUs or XL uh, processing unit plus nodes to get the physical DMX out. or you could use them in basic mode, still have pixelation and run video on them, meaning you just need the console, because then they only take up 32 channels each instead. We should see if this one, now of course I don't have internet, so that one doesn't work in here, so we'll run that one later. So with this setup in here instead, you would have all the basic controls of the lighting fixture from the lighting console, and then all the pixelation things happening with video coming to the P3, which saves you a lot of time and adds the flexibility of having a media server as well. 
or using 100 video Skeptrons from a console in full pixel mode would need a lot of more processing units and DMX converters and then 100 Skeptrons or just run it from the P3 and then map them as pixel map segments from the P3. Then you don't even have to use the media server if you want to stay on the whole whole thing with uh, pixel mapping. So P3 switch functionality is what I talked about with the Fatrons. It's basically a channel in, yeah, it's probably better to show it actually on the console. Let's see, where are we? Then I need to do this. So then we have, we'll do something more fun with content. So I'm running Resolume right now in the background here, so I can change content. And I'm doing NDI for output, which means in P3 in video input, I can select my source NDI, and then all my sources that are on the network arrives in here, which means it's quite simple to use something like a simple media server like Resolume to do basic content things. And it all lives in the same computer right now because it's a quite beefy computer that can take the abuse, but running media server, lighting console software, and P3 in the same one is not highly recommended, but it works in a way. It's, of course, better if you can use the console on the side you can easily run the media server in P3 on the same computer, but the console is taking it a bit too long in a way. So doing this, if I open up the console, you see the 10 Fatrons up here that are patched. They're running video now. So if I go in here and select the Fatrons, under Gobo, I've got a play mode, which is P3 switch. So here I'll switch to DMX. And then they're running the flip effect that I did before. So that's being taken from the queue list. So in here, now I'll control them regardless of the video. So it's just as simple as that. It's just a switch that goes up and down. In here, if I do the same thing on, let's take the XIP for that one, it's under video. So in here, I can flip it over to DMX, and then the fixture is not touched by the video coming in or out, it's just a lighting fixture. So it's as simple as just going in here and then flipping over to video, and then I get the video content running on the fixture. So it's all in the hands of the guy in control or girl in control, but yeah, we want to offer you the flexibility of doing really nice pixel effects in a simple way. So let's see if we get this thing working here. Yeah, we're still on the easier setup. Ah, okay, yeah. I've gone through these ones, but it jumped back a bit. P3PC is 100% free, which we said before. It is the perfect way to get started. So you can just go into martin.com and download P3PC, start playing around with, fixture, with fixtures inside it, try all the training videos that we have, and there are links for that on the web page as well. And then it's an easy way to get started. Of course, you can run your media players anything like Madrix or Luminex or something like that on the same machine and still use it. Use it in a way as a pre-programming tool where you look at your fixtures in B3 in the view I just showed you and then see how the pixels are turning out on the products. Because so far there are no visualizers who can prob properly do hybrid fixtures, so lighting and video fixtures. We're working on something in the background together with a few of the manufacturers, but it's still a bit long way out in terms of visualizing it. So you still have to do some kind of work around to make it work. Because 
no one has really thought about hybrid fixtures apart from us in the way that they're controlled by both video and lighting. All the other fixtures on the market that are pixelated are DMX only. So they will not take video into consideration unless you do it via some kind of media server and pixel mapping. And the thing we want to avoid with that is the complicated mapping of you have to make your own profiles for most of the uh, media servers and then have to think about universes, have to think about the universes not being fully in sync from because Sync has just been implemented in both Artnet and SACN, so most people haven't really taken advantage of that and implemented it. So, and if Sync is a big thing, which it probably is, because it should be, then yeah, it's a good thing to use. And of course, if you do fixed installations or architectural applications, then it's a good thing to have remote monitoring where you can log in to your P3 server from wherever, as long as it's connected to the internet and you make the correct setup, then you can monitor your installation, like for the bridges and all those kind of things where we have P3 installed. It's usually a good way of getting into the installation and seeing what you're doing. And preset work is, of course, something you can do a lot with. So, kind of summary. Cheaper and less complicated than hundreds of universes of DMX. Easy one. Artnet Stream ACM pixel mapping in, if you still want to do that and not do video. Manage the entire rig without walking around from down here or from Dimmer Beach. Run fixtures with video, DMX, or mixture of both. Get started 100% free. Just download and start playing. And of course, there's a lot more advanced features. Here's a bunch of links to P3 training videos. And of course, we can help setting up P3 training seminars. There's a big P3 user group on Facebook as well, where people from around the world ask questions and help out each other. So feel free to join that one if you're more interested in seeing what goes on in the bigger world as well. And of course, we have detailed system diagrams out on the web page. So, of course, we always have a Q&A slide in the end. So, if you want to ask questions on P3 now or grab me anytime during the day here or reach out later, then, yeah, it's an easy way to do it that way. <laughs>